This is the Sony G Master 14mm f1.8. What's up gang? My name is Stan Moniz. I am a member of the Sony Alpha Collective. For a few days, I had the privilege of testing out the brand new Ultra Wide 14 from capturing the best that Arches National Park had to offer at night to even taking it out to Laguna Beach in the surf to test out its crazy autofocus capabilities. This lens really inspired me to get out there and create something super cool. In this video, I'm gonna be covering the key points about this lens and my thoughts about the 14 millimeter during uh, my testing. Spoiler alert, I'm gonna have to go ahead and officially say that the 14 millimeter is now my new favorite lens to shoot with. If you see me around town or possibly in a national park somewhere, you can bet that I will have the 14 millimeter with me. So just putting it out there, I was never really a fan of ultra wide lenses due to the distortion that typically comes with a lens like this. And I always lean toward more of a 20 or 24 millimeter on the wide end of the spectrum. And I just found that that focal length, especially a 24, hit the sweet spot for me and it worked best for what I was doing. So obviously when the G Master 24 millimeter F1.4 came out a few years ago, I was really excited. Capturing the night sky is one of my favorite forms of photography. If you follow me on social media, I mean, it's pretty obvious, right? So next to surf photography, capturing the night sky is right next to it. So with the progression of technology that Sony is taking, the 24 millimeter was now armed with two XA elements, which effectively minimized any type of coma flaring. This is a very undesirable effect in astrophotography. So if you're shooting with a lens that can't handle this issue too well, especially at really wide open apertures, you're gonna notice in the furthest corners of your image, the stars are gonna to appear to bloom out, taking on a like bow tie or bird in flight appearance. So these elements that the 24 and now the 14 millimeter has effectively cut down this effect even at really wide open apertures than any other lens I've ever seen before. So point being, before the 14 came out, I held the 24 as the best lens for astrophotography, hands down, and I've been using it ever since. Now, if you would ask me a few years ago, right, if an ultra wide lens was possible at this size and weight, comparable to the 24, bearing the same elements, and then some, I would say, there's no way. It's not optically possible to make a lens this wide and an f1.8 in this size and weight. No way. Well, the 14 is here now. The Sony engineers have done it again and they have now produced the 64th lens to the Sony one mount family. This is now the 64th solution for photo and video for your full frame and APS-C Sony mirrorless cameras. So at the make of this video, Sony's closest 14 millimeter competition is nearly three pounds versus this 14 at 460 grams. That's crazy. The competition is also twice the size, making this Sony 14 millimeter the lightest, smallest, and fastest ultra wide angle lens on the market. So if you know me at all, I always aim on packing light on my travels. My friends trip out on how little I bring. In my opinion, I would rather use the space more wisely in my pack, bringing along another lens to complement the GM14. So owners of the G Master 24 millimeter might be wondering, should I ditch the 24 for the 14? I would say absolutely not. Both of these lenses sit well together, packing away nicely. Also, you never know when you might need a little extra reach. So diving into the 14, well, first off, it is a G Master, which makes it weather tough, unless you drop it in the ocean. Um, <laughs> I really, really wish I had taken a photo of the 14 attached to my Alpha One after I captured one of the biggest dust storms I've ever seen to date. Just take my word for it, the setup was completely covered in dirt. It was trashed, it, there was dirt everywhere. I don't think Sony would have been too stoked to see the 14 covered in dirt like that, but it handled. And that is the reason why they put it in my hands to see 
what I can do with this lens and where it could go. So there is no doubt in my mind if this wasn't dust and moisture resistant and made to withstand harsh, very harsh environments, I would have probably returned home with possibly an, an operative camera or lens. So knowing that this setup right here can handle harsh conditions like this, pushed me to pull over and set up my camera and capture this event unfold. It was really surreal and it turned out to be one of my most favorite memories from my last trip to Utah. So talking astrophotography, I was blown away on how well the 14 millimeter handled the stars in the furthest corners. At first I was a little worried about shooting wide open at f1.8, so I stopped it down to f2.0 in the hopes to tighten up the sharpness in the corners. But as you can see in these test shots, I shot back to back from f1.8 to f2.8. The photos bared little to no change at all, it was crazy. This is due to the two XA elements and one super ED glass element. These elements are used to suppress chromatic aberration and help to produce crazy, crazy, crazy sharpness from corner to corner. It's pretty astonishing how sharp it is even wide open at f1.8. So this made me really confident to shoot wide open at f1.8 because typically I will stop a lens down that way I know, you know, I'm going home with images that are really sharp. So shooting wide open at f1.8 allowed me to capture these images at a lower ISO and shutter speed to achieve pinpoint stars throughout the entire image. Shooting this ultra wide has its advantages and now I can see way more of the night sky. For motion time lapsing, this is a dream lens come true because it's so ultra wide with a minimal focus distance of 25 centimeters, that's right, 25 centimeters. You can get very close to your subject matter and create a lot of movement with even a portable smaller slider like this one I travel with daily. The lens is also equipped with a customizable button on the left side that I personally set to bright monitoring. When this function is engaged, it allows me to see in the dark, making it so easy to compose your shots in complete darkness without the use of a headlamp or any other source of light. It's pretty much the Sony's secret weapon when it comes to astrophotography. It of course has a de-clickable aperture ring that comes in very helpful if you prefer to control your aperture on your lens itself and it ranges from f1.8 to f16. So touching back to why I used to step away from ultra wide lenses in general is because of the notorious distortion that these lenses have. But of course you can use that distortion to your favor depending on what kind of photography you shoot. So the lack of distortion on this lens is by far one of the highlights that stood out to me in this testing. Um, even at f1.8, the vignetting and distortion was nearly non-existent. I can totally see this lens being a slam dunk for uh, photographers that focus on architecture photography, landscape photography, street photography, what else? Environmental portraits, indoor and even event photography, 100%. The lens does have a built-in hood, which is a huge plus, but because of its bulbous front element, you cannot screw on filters, but there is a solution to that. Sony included a rear filter holder, and the lens does come with a filter paper cutting template. So how does the lens handle flaring and ghosting? Well, sun stars are by far one of my favorite elements to include in my landscape photography, and I tried pretty hard to get a bad shot, but because of the Nano AR coating too that is applied to the element's surface. It really helped to suppress any drastic internal reflections and ghosting. So the continuous autofocus on this lens, I have to say is next level. The best way I could figure out how to test this was to take it into the surf. I set the 14 up on my Alpha 1, set the settings to high burst plus. I had it in raw uncompressed and set it to autofocus continuous. Locked it into my Aquatech housing and off I went. So waves come at you really fast. So being in focus is extremely critical. I couldn't believe after you know the session was over and I was reviewing these images and every single shot was in focus from the first shot to when the wave passed me by. That of course is the product of two XD 
extreme dynamic linear motors that produce super fast and precise and quiet autofocus tracking for stills and video. So I said before, this lens is super light and has a great point of balance on your Sony cameras. It's perfect for gimbal work and I can definitely see this lens being a great addition to someone looking for a simple compact solution for vlogging and just video work in general. So overall, I have to say the GM14 f1.8 is easily the best ultra wide or wide angle lenses I've ever shot with in my entire career. This has been a dream lens come true. I'm gonna miss this thing because I have to send it back to Sony today and I can't wait to get my own copy. This lens checks off all the boxes and in my opinion, it is a perfect lens. So if you're looking for an ultra wide lens that can do it all, I would definitely encourage you guys to test out the 14 when it becomes available. You will not be bummed out that you did, trust me. So to check out more pricing and information, check out the links below and you can also leave any comments or questions about the lens. We will do our best to get you guys answers. So that is about it gang. I had a blast uh, creating this video and I hope you enjoyed the video and learned a little bit more about the awesome Sony 14. Please give us a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button to plug yourself into the Sony Alpha universe. It is a very uplifting channel, lots of how to's, gear and reviews, photography tips, and last but not least, inspiration. So with that said, gang, I hope to see you guys out there in the Alpha universe. Latest. <laughs>